You want to make videos for YouTube, huh? You want to rack up the views, the subscribers, the brand deals, and the money, right? There's so many choices when it comes to cameras, SD cards, lenses, lights, and the list goes on and on and on. Well, I've been there. I've been shooting videos for over a decade, and today I'm going to save you time and headache when it comes to deciding which gear to buy for your YouTube channel. I'm gonna give you the list of gear to get you up and running and gear to give you just a little bit of a boost over everybody else. Hey, I'm Larry G and on this channel, I help content creators and wannabe content creators create better content. Quick shameless plug, I cover most of the things I'm gonna be going over today in my ebook from idea to upload and you can get it at the link in the description below. Over the past few months, I've helped quite a few people get their first set of YouTube gear. Whether they were completely on a budget or they had a little bit more to spend, I've been helping people decide which options are best for them and their budget and their goals when it comes to YouTube. And today I want to be able to share some of that information with you. So we'll be going over two setups, a budget setup and then more of an investment setup. And then at the end, we'll go over some of the software programs and things like that that you'll need if you want to get started up and running on YouTube. So the first level that we're going to talk about is the budget level. And this is for people who aren't ready to make that full investment. Maybe you're not fully committed to this YouTube thing. You just want to dabble a little bit, get your feet wet. No shame here, but you know, it is what it is. The second level that we're going to talk about is what I'm calling the investor level. Maybe you've already gotten started a little bit or you're willing to invest into making your videos look a certain way or you're just willing to invest more time and energy and effort into creating what we like to call crispy content. And before we get started, I just want to mention that links to everything will be down in the description below. I have a link to a master gear list that features everything that I'm talking about today. So let's start with the budget level. The number one thing that you're gonna need at this level is something to film your videos with. And if you are watching on a smartphone, congratulations, you already have the first piece of equipment. Now, a few tips to take your average phone video and upgrade it a little bit. Number one, you wanna shoot in 4K if possible. Number two, you wanna shoot in 24 or 30 frames per second if you're gonna be doing talking head style videos. Next, you're gonna to wanna to turn off any HDR. It does weird things in editing and it's not pretty or easy to work with. And then you're gonna to wanna to turn on your grids. You're also gonna to wanna to use the rear facing camera. It is way better quality than the front facing camera. And as an added bonus, you want to lock your exposure. It gets really distracting when you can see things changing, uh, colors, exposure, things like that. The camera's automatically compensating. Go ahead and lock down that exposure. These are just a few quick tips to take your camera from complete amateur beginner to something a little more intermediate and more pleasing to the eye. The only piece of gear that I'm going to actually recommend that you buy at the budget level is a tripod. I know a lot of people get by with propping their phones up on things or using specific cases, but if you want to just take it just a little bit further and spend just a few extra dollars, I would recommend getting a tripod. You can get these from literally anywhere, a TikTok shop, Five Below, Best Buy, Amazon, wherever you feel like getting a tripod from. I just do recommend getting a tripod, something to hold your phone steady and where you can place it wherever you want and not have to depend on having a different surface or stacking books or boxes or what have you. A few nice to haves in this budget level are things like a microphone or a light, but I'm gonna cover those in the next level. So if you're at the budget level, you don't really wanna spend a bunch of money, that's really all that you need. All you really need to do is make sure your phone is set to record using the correct settings and you have something to put your phone on and you have ideas and you're off to the races. Now we're gonna talk about level two, which I like to call the investment level. So for this level, you're probably looking at getting a camera. And the one that I recommend, I'm gonna save you a ton of time, is the Sony ZV-E10, either the Mark I or the Mark II. This is a small mirrorless interchangeable lens camera and I have been using it basically all year for these videos and the quality is amazing. 
At the time of filming this video, you can pick up this camera with the kit lens for around $700 US. If you want to pick it up a little cheaper, you may be able to find something used, either a body only or a body and lens, but if you're looking for a little cheaper, I would go the used route. Once you have your camera, you are going to need SD cards. That's how the video files get captured. And the two brands that I recommend for beginners or intermediates are SanDisk and Lexar. All SD cards are not alike. Whenever you're picking up an SD card, I do recommend that you choose one that is V30, U3, and it has the 10 with a circle around it. These extra bits just make sure that your read write speeds can keep up with your camera and you won't run into a buffering issue, especially if you're gonna be filming in 4K, which I do recommend. Once you have your camera and your SD card, you're gonna to wanna to invest in a microphone. People will tolerate bad picture, but they will not tolerate bad audio. If you're gonna go the wired route, I do recommend the Rode Video Micro. This is a small shotgun style mic that goes on your camera and it comes with a windscreen, it comes with a shock mount and a cable uh, usually to plug into your camera. The reason I recommend this is because it does not have external batteries, so you don't have to worry about power and there's no on off switch. So once you plug it in and you start recording, it's automatically on and it's going to capture the audio that you need. If you want to go the wireless route, I do recommend the Rode Wireless Me. That's the microphones that I use. They also have the Rode Wireless Go and I think they have a second version, but this is a nice wireless mic setup. I am not sponsored, but Rode, if you see this, please hook your boy up with a deal or an affiliate link or something, man. I've been promoting Rode mics for years. But these mics allow you to move around in your shots if you want to. So I could walk away from this and you could still hear my voice. I could be completely out of shot and you could still hear my voice. I don't have to worry about being so close to the camera to make sure it picks up my audio. I can move around and do things and it still picks up clean audio. So. Rode is a brand that I have been using for several years and I highly recommend them. The next thing on the list that I'm gonna recommend you pick up is a tripod. And you could go the route that I mentioned in the budget level, but if you wanna take it up just another notch, I recommend using quality tripods. So the brands that I'm gonna recommend are Joby, Manfrotto, and I know that some people like Peak Design. Now, personally, I use Joby, but that's only because I've invested in several Joby Gorilla Pods and I have a bunch of their mounting plates. And so a lot of that is similar, but I know that Manfrotto has more of a universal style mounting plate and they make a very similar tripod. And then also Peak Design has a nice tripod system with mounting plates as well. The only caveat I will say is that Manfrotto and Peak Design are a little bit more expensive. Manfrotto's a little more expensive than Joby. Peak Design's a little more expensive than Manfrotto. And so depending on the level that you're willing to invest, you can choose your own adventure in that area. The last piece of gear equipment that I'm gonna recommend you pick up is a light. That way you can film your videos and light them properly. You can film whenever and you're not completely dependent on the sun or a window or a cloud or anything like that, you can literally shut your blinds and film whenever you want. When it comes to which light, personally, I am using the Ulanzi 40 watt and or 60 watt cob lights. These are excellent lights. They're fairly affordable. And that's what I've been using all year to light my videos whenever I'm filming inside. Now, the main difference between these lights outside of wattage and design is that the 40 watt has an internal battery that you can charge and then you can literally carry it around and not have to worry about wires or batteries or anything like that. Whereas the 60 watt light does need a cable or a V-mount or a different external battery source to power that light and it's more powerful. So do with that information what you will. I know there are other options like the Zoom light, but these are the lights that I have chosen and I really like them so far. Also, if you're gonna pick up one of these lights, I do recommend that you also pick up the mini dome. It does not come with it. It is a separate purchase. It is fairly affordable, but it does allow the light to spread a little more evenly and spread better than the diffusion that comes with the light. And that's all when it comes to camera gear. So next we're gonna talk about some of the software or programs that I think 
are helpful when it comes to making YouTube videos. If you're still gonna rock the budget route and you don't want to edit on a computer, you could edit all of the footage on your phone using an app like CapCut. CapCut is completely free to use. If you have an iPhone, you could use iMovie. That is also a free editing program. If you wanna spend a little bit of money but still edit on your phone, there are a few other options for you. If you like CapCut and you want some of those premium features, that is an upcharge. But if you want different programs, I'm gonna recommend Adobe Premiere Rush. That's a nice mobile first editing platform. And then InShot is also another one that I recommend. If you're not gonna edit on your phone and you want to move to a computer, there are a few things that I do recommend you invest in. Number one is a decent computer. Now I'm not gonna tell you what computer to buy. Personally, I use Apple Mac computers. I have a MacBook Pro. It is a couple of years old. It does not have an M1 chip in it. It's still rocking Intel, but that gives you an idea of the ecosystem that I work in. I have worked with and I have friends that work off of Windows computers. So Mac, Windows, whatever you decide is up to you. But the main things that I'm going to recommend are that you have a minimum of 16 gigabytes of RAM, especially if you're going to be filming longer videos or talking head videos and 4K. That just gives you a little more bandwidth to work with and then i'm also going to recommend that you get an external hard drive now whether you decide to go with an actual hard drive with spinning discs on the inside or you go the solid state drive is really up to you but i do recommend that you start at two terabytes when it comes to which brands to buy i'm also not going to tell you what to buy but the brands that i use and that i trust and that i buy repeatedly are seagate Western Digital, not the cheapest version. You wanna get kind of that intermediate version. And then Samsung when it comes to the SSD drives. Moving on to ways to edit your videos. Again, this is gonna be complete personal preference or whatever you feel will work best for you. Personally, I use Adobe Premiere Pro, but I actually started in iMovie and then went to Final Cut Pro. So I am versed in all of those platforms. However, I also know that some people are switching, moving, and using DaVinci Resolve, and CapCut actually has a desktop editing platform, and I know that some people use Descript. If you're planning to stay within the Apple ecosystem, I would recommend going with iMovie or Final Cut because all of those programs work together and they are a bit faster. If you're willing to learn a program that can be used across Windows or Mac, I highly recommend Premiere Pro. That's what I learned on to switch back and forth, but I know DaVinci Resolve also goes back and forth and then CapCut and Descript also go back and forth. And just as an aside, things like CapCut and DaVinci are free. They have free versions, whereas programs like Final Cut and Premiere Pro do cost money. I also find it extremely helpful to have all of my ideas digitized. I know that some people like the analog style and sometimes I do like to write down my ideas in a notebook, but then I take those written ideas and I transplant them into a digital space. And a few of the programs that I use are the Notes app on my phone for quick captures, Google Docs when it comes to fleshing things out a little bit. And then I do keep um, content ideas and notes and things and organization in Notion. I know that I need to consolidate those things and I will be consolidating very soon to Notion completely. But for now, these are the programs that I use to house ideas and scripts and things like that. Lastly, I'll leave you with a bit of advice if you're just getting started on YouTube and that is quantity will be quality until you're able to upgrade. I believe that it is more advantageous for you to put out a lot of content so that you can get good. The only way to get good is to make a bunch of bad videos. Your first video is going to be bad. Your first five videos might be bad, but on that sixth video, you'll start gaining momentum. You'll learn how to speak to camera. You'll learn how you like to deliver certain things. But the only way that you're going to do that is that if you keep putting things out. So I would highly advise you to begin with quantity before you really tackle 
tackle quality. If you found any of this helpful, I would appreciate a thumbs up. If you have any questions about gear, techniques, anything like that, go ahead and drop a comment down below. I do respond to all of them. And if you want to take the next step in your content creation journey, you can pick up my ebook. It is linked down in the description below, along with a master list to everything that I've mentioned in this video. If you made it this far, thank you so much for watching. I greatly appreciate you. Remember to do the work, believe in yourself, and as always, keep creating. Peace.